first thing I want to say is I I think Boss Level was the last movie I saw at the Arc Light before everything shut down. That would be you and me both, brother. That would be you and me both. That was the last film I saw theatrically was was Boss Level. That really that really fun uh, Arc Light screening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what a good movie to make for your life. I know, man. I know. Why not? Right. If we're gonna go out, we might as well go out with some. Yeah, no, it was uh it's a you know, it's a bummer. It is. And uh, but I but I also think that it's probably this the the, the kind of the the age of the streamer and kind of people finding different ways to view movies was always kind of upon us. I think this just hastened its uh, arrival. Um, well, that's what you said at that screening was yeah. I was really interested in the backstory of this movie. It's a huge, beautiful action-packed that's fun great. movie and yeah. you guys were having a hard time finding a home for it well it was one of those situations where again you're still kind of stuck you know stuck in this uh, what i find a very kind of antiquated and outmoded you know the movie star system of getting films financed you know if you don't have these five guys nobody's interested in making your movie and so we kind of labored under that that particular system for you know 10 years about a decade of uh you know you know beating our head against the wall trying to get this film set up and uh, no one wanted to make it and so even the, when we finally did get it made it was so uh you know, spitting bailing wire and jerry rigged together with duct tape and you know it, it just on the financial side that we you know we, we we lost 15 days out of our schedule um uh just got slashed you know uh, arbitrarily and, you know, we had to figure it out and kind of make do. And, and thank God we did. It's not a process I ever want to repeat, to, ever, you know, in terms of like just getting smashed repeatedly. But it was certainly, I think, ultimately um, uh, good for the movie. Whatever, whatever choices we had to make, uh, sometimes in a very abject way, we stuck with them. And, and for better or worse, the movie came out great. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not, it's, it's hard to kind of, you know, uh, relitigate the past, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, it was extraordinarily difficult. And I think people didn't quite know what to do with it or what to make of it. Uh, uh, and, and, and didn't, and then it's, and I think it was, um, one of those things that's kind of, it's a bit of a platypus that movie, you know, it's kind of some parts groundhog day, some parts die hard, some parts, you know, emotional <laughs> drama between a husband, or I'm sorry, a father and a son. So, uh, there's a, it's hitting on a lot of different, uh, different chords. I was going to say for a movie about a time loop, it really plays so good the second time you see it. Cause I watched it again the other night and I'm like, I'm enjoying this even more. Than oh, that's great, brother. Time. That's great. Cause you kind of know, you kind of, you kind of, it, it's kind of, uh, you get a sense of what's, what you're, what you're, what you're, you know, you're going to expect and what you need to kind of understand going into the movie. So uh, it's funny. I have not seen, I don't think I've seen it since the arc light and I'll just wait until, uh, I think Wednesday we're doing the virtual premiere with Hulu and I'll watch it then just for, you know. That was one of the questions I had is, what, is the movie shorter now than when we saw it at the Arc? I don't think so, but I think you saw the, I think you saw the, um, uh, the version that's out now. I don't think we did anything to it after that. Um, uh, but if it's playing faster, that's always a, that's always a great thing. Um, I thought it was a little shorter, maybe, but I don't it's know. like I think it's ninety six minutes total. It's pretty, it's pretty quick. You know, it doesn't really. You're kind of in that jam the whole time, which is which is fun. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I've been having this conversation with my boss lately about movies, and we keep watching them, and I keep seeing these like Netflix or um, like Hulu movies. And I'm like, why is this two hours and 30 minutes? Give me a 90 I, minute, and an 80 minute movie. That's what I want to I, watch right now. I know, brother. It's like, I, you know, the, the, the great thing about, about a movie like Bosso, because of the because of the way in which, because of the aesthetic, at some point I can just show a gear shift, an elevator door. The visual language can be consolidated and, and kind of squeezed down so you don't need to spend a lot of time. You know, a whole sequence where he's trying to infiltrate Dino is really kind of very montage -y. But you get it. You understand that you're seeing these different attempts again and again and again, and and I think that uh, that uh, that certainly lends itself to a, a more brisk pace of a film. And I like faster movies. I think we all do. It's like the ones where the slow burns are required. I, I kind of go in there with built-in patience. For I'm not going to watch Nomadland and think I got to fly through it, which I really enjoyed that film, you know. But it's not. That's not meant to be you know, a whiz bang time at the, at the Cineplex. That's meant to be a, it is what it is, you know?
Yeah, I watched, this is dumb, but I watched 10 right after I watched Boss Level. Mm -hmm. And my God, I hadn't ever seen 10, but uh, have right. you ever seen that movie? I don't think I have, brother. Who, who is that? Who's what? what? That, that was like a big phenomenon in 1979 with Bo Derek and Dudley Moore. Oh, 10, yes, of course, dude. Yes, Jesus Christ, Break Edwards. Yes, sorry, dude. I was thinking of some, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. It was just like how that movie just like, it's just a flat line for two hours and it feels like, you know, five hours. I wasn't yeah. expecting that because I was like, how well, is yeah. this? Like, right, and then Blue Derek shows up on the beach and the movie, still, you know, it's like, but they, that's the thing. It's like, at the same time, I think about this this need now. And I think it's I think it's this thing that's kind of, bled out from the studio philosophy about you got to get people in these movies faster and they got to be and i traditionally like like kind of in media res you, you open the movie in the middle of something right i like that kind of approach yeah. i like to kind of jump people into a film however it when i think really, or no, yeah. it weapon two, just how it opens and it, 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 you go, man you're into it but I, but i also think if you did that that way of let's cut for time let's cut for time you know you like once upon a time in the west which is one of my favorite openings of all time in a movie all this great quirky stuff the the, the drop of water hitting the guy in the you know in the hat and, and jack elam's character that crazy eye and the fly and all this stuff that would have been they would have said oh that's that's nothing to do with the movie yeah but you, it does you know it's like it's these bad guys waiting for charles bronson to show up on a train and it's like they would have discarded all that stuff and thrown it out and i think that's the danger is that yeah a movie can play too long but it can also not not play long enough and you're and you're left kind of grasping with that you know what i wanted to feel a, a different way about this but i'm kind of in its kind of abbreviation it lost me you know yeah well it's like i feel like though with some of these netflix movies like the spike lee movie the uh, right the five bloods i haven't seen it i haven't seen it yet well it's like it seems like they, the creator or the filmmaker has full control over it now. And so it's right. going to be longer and they're going to put, and there's nobody telling them maybe take stuff out. Right. I, mean, right. I like that movie a lot, but you know, it's like, is anybody telling these people to edit these movies now and Netflix? Is I like mean, a it, movie? It seems like right. Right. Cool. Yeah. I think, well, listen, it's like, you know, certainly there's always room to be, you know, I can look at some of these movies and go, okay, give me, I'll take 30 minutes out of that film. You know what I mean? And, but then I look at my own, you know, listen, I thought on this film, we just made cop shop. It's like, I'm not gonna be able to get any more time out of this. And then lo and behold, you start going, you know, do I really need that scene? You know, and at some point you have to brutalize the, the material, but not, so that you feel that, you know, you're just, leave, you know, it's like, you know, speed for the sake of speed is always a mistake in, in my book. It's always a, and, you know, listen, on, on boss level, you know, there was a six minute monologue in there from Mel Gibson to Naomi Watts character, this beautiful uh, thing that I, that Mel just destroyed. I wrote him this big monologue about a snake and a boar. It's in the international version, so you can actually see the scene, right? But when I called Mel and said, you know, because I was, I was dreading making this phone call because we didn't need the scene and it was, and it, it felt like it was slowing the movie down a little bit. Um, Mel didn't even didn't even flinch. He's like, nope, Joe, I get it. What's good for the movie? I mean, and he worked his ass off on that monologue. Didn't even didn't even didn't even create a flutter. He's like, I get it, you know. And this guy's also a world class filmmaker, so he understands, you know, that ultimately you have to service the film. But but yeah, I I, I worry, brother, we're getting too. It's like you start to luxuriate, and why it needs to be three hours? You know why? Why does it need to be three hours? What do you what what additional um, uh, materials are you you know, what are we not getting? What's not being imparted, you know? So. I was going to say with boss level, it, the way the beginning of it goes up until a certain point, it really is like a piece of music that plays like this concerto where you were watching it. And it's the way it's edited and constructed and the storytelling is kind of amazing to me. I know we had a lot of time loop movies. Right. Nothing quite like this. Right. Well, listen, that's I, I, one that I appreciate that. That's great. Uh, that's a huge compliment. I really uh, appreciate that. It, you know, I think that, you know, because it's such a kind of beloved subgenre of film, you know, like people seem to really love the time loop. You know, it's like you, you it's you're hard pressed to find one that hasn't had some you know measure of success um, because I think it offers this idea of, you know, and I think now that the multiverse is very much a part of kind of the zeitgeist and that understanding of the multiverse, this idea that, man, if I had just zigged at this moment in my life, I could have wound up in Buenos Aires with this beautiful woman. And, you know, you know who knows? It's like we have all these kinds of ideas about our life. And, and I think that plays into the vicarious nature of, of, of something like this, that, man, if, you know, the idea that through repetition, I mean, what, you know, what is boss level? What is Roy's uh, kind of uh, struggle, if not the Gladwell, the outlier, you know, the 10,000 hour rule, you know, eventually you'll get great at this and you'll be great enough that in 14 minutes, you can stop everything bad that's happening to you, you know? So it, it is a, and I, but I really stuck to it, but right? I stuck to the kind of the conventions of it and, and, and other films that had come, 
you know, of course there's, there's, you know, there's like groundhog, but then there's also back to the future, which is a huge influence on, on boss level. You know, uh, even the opening shot with the coffee cut with the coffee makers is, is a nod to Zemeckis and Gail, you know, so. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, you, I, I felt because I'm not a sci-fi guy at all. And I think I'm probably, I'd be all thumbs if in that, uh, in that arena, but you know, uh, Tony Scott, my, my former mentor, God rest his soul, he was, you know, he made a really interesting uh, deja vu to me, was an interesting time travel movie. And it had a very brick and mortar kind of feel to it, which is very like kind of cemented in the reality of you're going to wake up and you're, you're going to be dead because there's no electrical current we can send through this damn thing. And he never really tried to gin up with, 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 with spectral light and all this other stuff that I felt I had to resort to to tell the story of what that, what that time travel may look like. Um, uh, but I think, yeah, we, I was, we, I was pretty diligently. I wanted to stick to, to the, uh, to the rules, uh, more or less of what that, of what, of, of the, the, the time loop. I don't know if it's breaking a rule, but it's something I don't think I've seen in one of these time loop movies also is the aspect that he realizes this has been happening to his son over and over again, this horrible right. thing. Right. And you understand that like everybody outside the scope of this one Frank Grillo character is it's happening to all of these people. Yeah. And yeah. Like in Groundhog's Day, you don't ever consider that. You just follow Bill Murray's character. And this you kind of go, oh, well, hey, hold on. There's this whole right. other thing happening outside, which is right. To me. Right. Which is this idea, too, of, of this, this kind of you know, selfishly kind of heroic histrionics you've been engaged in, you know, the end result is they still get your kid every day. They still target your kid. And I, and I thought, you know, that was, a, that was the part of the movie that worried me the most, because how do we go from this kind of almost slapsticky, you know, a, a woman chopping off his head, you know, multiple times and, and all this kind of, you know, um, overtly absurdist humor to this, to downshift into something that could be very tricky. And it's a, it's a tough gear change. And I think Frank handled it with great aplomb and having Rio, having his actual son play his son, I think to me was, was a measure of like, it was a little bit of a hedge on my part. I was like, I didn't want, I don't want to worry about you having to gin up these feelings, looking at this kid. I want you to look at a kid, something you love, you know, which is your I own. I didn't son. realize that was his kid. Oh yeah. That's his kid. dude. So when you see those things, but when you see him that you're seeing, I see Frank looking at Rio. I don't see Roy looking at his son, Joe. I see Frank looking at his son. And marveling at his kid and, 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 and these ways that are so evident and so obvious on camera and inescapable. You know, the lens is not going to miss that stuff. I'm going to say, uh, I didn't, his kid's a, a good actor. Wait, he's great. And by the way, Frank, Frank did not want him in the movie. He was like, he was like calling Sharon Bialy saying, I know Joe wants this, but I just think it's a mistake. And my kid's never acted before. And they wind up auditioning him. And he's better than anybody we had seen. And I knew that. I knew Rio just had this, this great grace to him. And his both of his parents are phenomenal actors. His mother Wendy's is is a, is a is a um, is phenomenal and on Yellowstone and they're they're really you know he's got at least in the genetics hereditarily he's got he's got good stuff to work with. So did you uh, put him in the cop shop? What's that? Did you put him in your new one, the cop shop? I did not. I did not. I, Rio's like now. Rio literally told his dad, unless it's Marvel or Spielberg calling, I'm just not that interested. <laughs> <laughs> already the kids are already a diva i mean it's unbelievable <laughs> in a marvel movie there's a lot of stuff there you go there. man i know I, I think we're all gonna wind up in a marvel movie at some point or working for marvel you know um you're gonna touch but, those? you know what brother I, I think you know i think they do them so brilliantly and i think kevin feige and those guys are so phenomenal what they do i just don't i don't see a place for myself you know i just don't see um the same way i feel the same about star wars i want to be i want to be sitting in the audience i don't want to be uh in that mix because i think that uh they've got some very talented people you know uh uh doing their thing and 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 also people that are very geared to that material um that that they don't that i i just would feel like a bit of a um an outsider and not in a good way, you know, and I, and, you know, listen, I'm not, I don't have the, I don't have, I don't um, despise those prequels. And I, and, and I would make the argument that, you know, those prequels, I, there's not much in the last, these last four films, at least in my humble opinion, that was as cool or as memorable as the pod races or Darth Maul, you know? So it's like, there's, you know what I mean? So it's like, I do, I did miss Lucas. I did miss George Lucas's influence, whatever, however people want to, um, that guy's a visionary. That guy's a genius behind all of that stuff. So it's like, you know, it's, I don't think it's so easy to cast off, you know, 
uh, the originator. Not that they did that. I'm not saying that they, but but I missed his influence in those in these last crop of movies. Um, whatever that may have been, you know, um, I feel like it was needed a little bit. That, that those bits of inspiration and those bits of you know what reminded me of the old movies, you know. Uh, uh, but at any rate, yeah, it's it's just not my not my uh, cup of tea. Well, I'm wondering if this is your cup of tea because watching this a second time, I think for the first 40 minutes, there are numerous times where I'm like, Frank Grillo is fucking hilarious in this movie. Yes, he is. And you're handling the comedy in such a way that it made me think they're trying to redo Naked Gun. I was like, <laughs> Frank Grillo would just knock this out of the park, I think. Right. Oh, dude, do you imagine him as the Leslie Nielsen character? It'd be fantastic. What I was thinking is like he has that like straight man but hilarious kind of ability. And all of a sudden I was like, That's yeah, no, needed. Frank is yeah, he's extraordinarily funny in person. He really is. He's he's uh he's a really he's got a great sense of humor. He never gets to really show that off. And I think he did stuff in this movie that a lot of guys in that the, quote unquote the action realm, these the, the action genre that get these movies green lit. I don't know that they would have been as good as what he did. I mean, he, I think it was masterful the way he handled that stuff. You know, to go from kind of you know uh, muscle bound, you know, uh, a doofus to loving father to you know, uh, you know what I mean to kind of uh, to, to you know like Curly from the Three Stooges. You know, that's those are difficult. Those are difficult turns to make. That's why I don't want to put down any of the big action stars, but they do kind of, they do their action movement and then they give maybe one line of dialogue to, you know, tap on the end of it. And this sure. is a full body oh, yeah. performance. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I think that that's, I think, but I think that's good. It's got to be somewhat, you know, you have to evolve it in certain ways. Yeah. You have to certainly push it the way that you think it should, or nudge it in a way that might be an interesting way to consider it or an interesting way to go. And that's, I think that's what we are trying to do, you know. Yeah, and this movie kind of, I don't know if the relationship between you and Frank Grillo started here or your partnership in making movies. Is this where it started? No, no, we've been, we've been, we've been, we've been, we've been, more parties been a few years, you know, and, and we also, this was the first thing after the gray that I really wanted to work on him with was boss level. But we made, a, we made some films uh, in the interim uh, in the last couple of years um, and Cop Shop being the most recent of those films. But, but this was the one that he and I kind of put our, you know, uh, backed up the Brinks truck too and said, okay, this is the one we really want to bust out with and kind of do the, again, make this kind of very populist, you know, big action genre film that, that with our kind of unique take on it. So um, yeah, but this is something that's, this, this was kind of, this was a, a real, um, you know, uh, odyssey for the, for the both of us to, to, to get this thing to the, to the screen. I was going to say that, ending you bring up a point about these time loop movies i think maybe you're the only one that's explained why there's a time loop uh yeah but no you know what i think that there there uh uh i didn't want there to be the vagary of why is this happening she needed to kind of if uh naomi watts character needed to kind of jump start this this time loop this is how i'm going to do it i'm going to basically count on the fact that this guy although he's going to be targeted will continue to will keep coming, you know, his, his kind of, you know, uh, lunk-headed persistence will, will win the day because he won't quit. And, and, but I wanted there to be a very simple, it was the DNA. It's his hair, it's blood. It's that, whatever that was, that was, to me, that was as sci-fi as I wanted to get with, uh, you know, um, you know, quantum displacement and <laughs> time travel and so on, you know. You know, it's like, I keep seeing these movies where they have, CERN and the Atom Smasher and they keep kind of playing into that and I'm like are these like real life warning signs that Hollywood is giving us and I know your movie's more of an independent movie right maybe it doesn't speak so much to that but I'm wondering right. how come we see so much of that coming seeping into and even the kids movie well, Spider-Verse kind of playing into that it's right kind of to me right. are, are you yeah. aware of the Mandela effect yeah, brother, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's like, like it plays into. I'm like, why, why are these movies kind of, you know, it's like they really, kind of incorporate the gray alien, like you said, right. like the head shops, and they're like, oh, they're doing that. So you're when it comes, you know, and you're okay. You know, right. It, it, oh, it's like you know when you heard when I first heard about the Hadron Collider and, and the idea if they flip the switch on this thing, they have no idea what's going to happen. That scared the shit out of me. I remember reading it in New Yorker. I was like, wait, what? You know, this giant machine underground somewhere in France is going to, they flip the switch. They don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's like that to me is, these are, these are, you know, science in that way. And I mean, listen, from the, since the atomic age, I mean, we've seen 
the, the, the absolute destructive calamity that science, uh, especially science unguarded, is capable of, 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 of uh, wreaking. So it's like that, those things do kind of fascinate me. And the idea that I, I'm not a big proponent of end of the world scenarios, unless the end of the world is your kid's dead. You know what I mean? And that's what he says. There's a line in there where Roy basically says, and there it is, the end of the world. Uh, who cares? Mine's already over. You know what I mean? Like that, it, none of this stuff matters now. The idea that everything's going to be torn apart and shredded and atomically broken into sub, you know, like a speed of light is not really uh, of interest to me anymore. And I think that's what, for me, the, the the quality of that was very important because I can't, I think it's hard for, at least it's hard for me to wrap my head around this kind of doomsday scenario unless it has a very personal uh, 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 connection. Um, and it's not just the affectation of we got to save humanity, you know, um, that, that to me is too broad and too, too large a, a concept to wrap my head around, but your kid, I get, you know, I understand that. Do you, do you believe in the Mandela effect or do you think that's just misplaced memory? I mean, dude, listen, do I, you know, um, I mean, it's like, you know, I could, you could certainly entertain aspects of it, you know, that are, that are, but, but, you know, it's like, dude, do I believe in, you know, the concept of deja vu? Do I believe in, you know what I mean? Like, do I believe in, um, you know, yeah. And, 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 and you know, or, do, or is it something, you know, it's like going to another thing. It's like Occam's razor. It's like the most, the most ready and available explanation for something is likely exactly what's taking place. You know what I mean? So it, it's, you know, I, again, I'm not a, I certainly don't pretend to be a purveyor of, of great scientific theory and thought, I, nor do I, nor do I, I even mean, want to dip my toe in it, which is why I, I deliberately stayed away from it. Cause I know there's certain people that are just going to tee me up for like, well, if you're really going to talk about uh, time travel, it's got to be, it's like, oh, for God's sake. It's like, yeah. you know, look at the way, look at the way Endgame handled it. It was brilliant. You know, it was brilliant the way that they handled uh, the, the time heist and replicating. can't complain though, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so, listen, in the context of the, the the enjoyability of film, it's like, yeah, to play, sure. Is it critical? No. You know, it's like, um, uh, I just, again, I'm, I'm, I always uh, deliberately um, stayed away from landing on anything that was too, uh, that could be, dude, that could be, uh, uh, you know, uh, undone and shredded and well that's not you know what I mean it's like forget it yeah. it's like, make it when in this thing it's like keep it simple simple instead of keep it simple stupid just keep it simple you know yeah I was gonna say yeah and it's so focused on Frank Grillo's main character that you don't like ever have time to think about the splinters that it's making unlike oh, absolutely character. brother absolutely and again and, and, yeah and I think listen if the second film you, you consider that again because of the because of the uh, the multiverse is so pervasive now and people talk about it and, and, and the idea of time fracturing, time splintering and so on. It's like that, that could be something that you, you know, we, you know, we'd be lucky enough to have that discussion with the second one. I don't know where the hell we do, but we, you know, we'd have to figure that out. I was going to say, there's just so much odd stuff. And lately there was been another uh, rash of Mandela effect incidences. It's like Stephen King. I, I don't know if you heard this one or if you knew this from back in the day, but I didn't know Stephen King in invented GI Joe figure. I'm like, what, when did this happen? Why don't I know this? I would think I would know this kind of information. So he invented the GI Joe, like he invented a GI Joe action figure and wrote the back of the card. And I'm like, okay. And I look it up and I'm like, this is real. When did this happen? How did this like? How did that happen? slip through the the cracks? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, and there was which, another, one, which, which GI Joe character did he like? Which like, one was it? It's a magician with a crystal ball, and I'd seen it. I remembered it from when I was a kid, but I was like, I would have thought I would have known Stephen King. That's King nuts, dude. Created this character, yeah. That's so it's nuts. things like that where you go. Wait but then minute. again, dude, I mean, they asked King about like the, the period of his life where he wrote like Cujo and Pet Cemetery and these other books, and he literally just said, "To hey, be honest with you, I was doing so much cocaine, I have no memory of writing any of those books." <laughs> Like and this off in an afternoon, the GI Joe thing. I didn't even think about it after that, so it was it was never really news, you know. But that's crazy. I did not know that. There was another one, and I cannot remember it. That I was just like, "What are you talking about? How does nobody know this?" But I can't remember what it was. It's so weird. But I want to go back to the 15 days cut out of the movie. Now, yeah, you have a great Indiana Jones joke in the movie. Yeah, and it plays out 
unlike you're expecting. But then later on in the movie, there is an actual Indiana Jones moment where you're like, whoa, it, it, with the machine gun where all okay. of the characters right. are elevated all at once. And right. it was one of the, I think you said something at the arc light that that had changed because of the 15 days. It was, but it was, we had had this thing we called the jam room that we were going to build because I wanted to do a fight kind of like that old Jamiroquai, uh, uh, was it virtual insanity, the old Jamiroquai video where the, the, the set moves around him it was a moving set, but it looks like he's, it looks like he's moving. He's not moving. The whole set is moving around him. And we had this whole idea to do this big fight scene, but that was a five or six day heavily choreographed fight. And we just weren't going to be able to do it. And I thought that the, that, that the potential callback to something like that, where he actually did get to mow everybody down and not have the, not get in the big fight was kind of like fitting, you know, it's like, well, now you have to save time. What's the quickest way to save time. And it was like, and actually it works because it's a funny moment where he just, you know, blows the shit out of everybody. And it was one of those great, uh, the, the shot as we're pulling back of the door kind of collapsing, did it all on its own, which told me, okay, the movie gods are looking, at, looking after us on this one. It was like, you know, everything worked exactly as it should work. But yeah, man, that was a casualty of, of, that, of that intense kind of budgetary scheduling, you know, cut. And, you know, and again, it was ultimately we made it work and probably made it work for the better. Um, and, and, you know, again, I'm a big fan of, you know, your uh, uh, the stuff that's stacked against you, your limitations and your shortcomings oftentimes can turn into, you know, you can collateralize those and they actually wind up being good for you. But in that instance, I was like, I just, you know, it felt like a band. It didn't, it felt like a band. And I wrapped my head around. It's like, okay, no, no, this can actually, this plays, this is a good thematically, this will work. Uh, but yeah, dude, it was a, it was a, it was one of those things we had to get rid of. Well, yeah, not knowing the history behind it when the first time I watched the movie, because you guys came out and spoke after the movie. Yeah. I thought it was a funny callback. And I was like, that's great. And then I didn't realize. Yeah. Because yeah. so you would never guess it. Like that opening scene with the helicopter and all of that, you're just like, man, this looks like a great big budget movie that yeah. should be opening, you know. Right. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. And, and by the way, it is, you know, it's, it's not a cheap, it was a 40 some odd million dollar film. So it wasn't a cheap movie, but it was like, again, it was, it, you know, you're in, you know, listen, we just had people that were stealing from the film and, and, you know, and embezzling from the movie. And uh, that was a reality that we were dealing with. And, you know, but at the same time, I don't know that we could have made the film in any other way. You're going to, you know, in those instances with the really, with the really janky kind of weird financial agreements and stuff, you know, you're going to get uh, strange bedfellows is an understatement. You know, you can get some real freaks in that mix, and and you just have to at some point stop complaining and go make the best movie you can make, which is what we did. Now, I want to say, yeah, it is a great movie, and I think it's going to be one of those ones that all of a sudden everybody's watching, you know, because everybody's at home and they're like, "What are we?" Doing? I hope so, brother. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. I think they had to have made um, the Andy Samberg movie be after you guys made this right it just happened to have come out before you guys yeah, did this. i think so yeah which i really enjoyed palm springs yeah, um uh, uh, i i dug it you know i thought it was like that was funny and i thought he was really good in uh in the actress what's her name um, christine she's great she was in yeah. one of my favorite episodes um uh but um yeah i i think it did i think it came out after uh, well we i think well we shot this in, we shot this in the spring of 2018 yeah, so definitely they did. Yeah. It just yeah, happened right. that Hulu picked. I just thought it was interesting that Hulu was like, "Oh, we like these time loop movies. Let's get another one." So right. Well, yeah. I, listen, and they've been Hulu's been extraordinary. They've been really, really future. about. Yeah, they've been great about about the supporting us and and kind of you know and really the materials are always great. That they and the, I love that what they're doing on the marketing side. So you know, yeah, the the, the uh, and again, like I said it's a hell of a way to spend a couple hours on Friday or Saturday night. It's a lot of fun. And and if you like these types of movies, I think it's one of the best in a long, long time. I really do. Is it coming to theaters? It's playing theatrical in Australia right now, South Korea, I think Thailand. It's, it's, it's theatrical in certain parts of the world. Right now. Is it going to be at the movie theaters? Like I know the mission Tiki here plays all of those. I, I hope so, brother. I really do. I hope so. Cause I'd love to see it again in a theatrical setting. It's just, I think again, you know, well, it's good. I guess Tom and Jerry this past weekend did like, 13 million. Yeah, it was um, really great. It's really kind of heartening. I just hope it's not. I hope this kind of I, I still think it's going to be a minute before people jump back into movie theater. I don't even know where movie theaters are open at where they're seeing Tom and Jerry. Here I, don't, I don't you know, I don't know how you feel. I don't like to go to when I go to a movie, I go to like an eye pick. I go to, you know, like I'll spend 30, 35 bucks to watch a movie because I want to sit in there with other people that oh, want yeah. to 
35 bucks to watch him lose. So somebody's texting and yapping. And well, that yep. was the thing is like seeing boss level at the arc light in that, that cinema, that was a $35, $40 ticket, whatever it costs experience. That's what this movie is. The arc light and the draft house, you know, those guys, they take that shit seriously. You put your phone away, you know, don't, te- don't text, don't talk. It's like, it's great. There's that. I want that level of regard. If I'm going to go sit in a movie theater, yeah. I'm not doing that. you know, I'm not sitting there endlessly on my phone and, you know, chatting and texting and talking and so on. So it's like, I want, so I don't know brother, that you're going to be able to go back to the, the traditional 350, 400 seat theater where you're jamming everybody in there like a Regal or what have you, or an AMC, but there's not some fundamental, you know, listen, there's been a paradoxical shift in, in this, in this entire, you know, in, during this pandemic in a, in a lot of ways. And, but that one is, is, uh, is, is noteworthy because it's just going to change the way we watch. Listen, I watched Wonder Woman, the Wonder Woman sequel, on an 85-inch Samsung Sonos Arc. It was every bit as good as sitting in a theater and watching that movie. How, how the hell are you going to beat that? You know, we don't sell four by three televisions anymore. Uh, you can get a cheap, fantastic TV for 300 bucks that you can carry out of there yourself and literally mount by yourself. You know, it's good to the point where you hang a wood nail, you can just put a TV there. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah, so, a pretty good projector. Yeah, man. Jeez. Dynamite projectors for, for, for 200 bucks. Like, you know, it's like, and, and show movies and a really, you know, buy a sound bar. You can do everything for less than 500 bucks, it's, it, it, you know, and, and show it properly. It's like, um, you know, we did it on, you know, my DP and I, Juan Miaspras, we always will watch movies before we start shooting it. It was throwing up like old, like Harakiri, like Masaki Kobayashi threw it up and it was a black and white, you know, criterion. It looked amazing. It looked amazing on a, on a $200, you know, uh, projector. So as we get more, you know, um, uh, savvy about these types of things, I think theaters are going to have to compete, you know, or it's going to be Marvel, Disney, big musicals. It's going to be those types of films that we go out to see, which I could certainly see that being, uh, you know, uh, a possibility as well what it looks like now i want to liam neeson is not in cop shop he is not he's not gerard butler frank grillo and this young woman named alexis louder who's really dynamite well the reason i ask is because you do have the liam neeson line in this movie and i felt like you're setting it up for maybe a movie where we do get to see frank grillo and liam neeson kind of face off is that that would be if we did a boss level sequel I'd, i'd write something for liam i'd get him in there we'd figure out a way to get him in there because those guys are, plus I, they, they love each other. They have a mutual admiration society. And I know they would want to work together. <laughs> it just seemed like a little, uh, what do you call it? A little dig like he was like. Oh, we, had to, man. we had to, yeah, we had to. It's like, we thought it'd be funny to put him in there. We thought he'd get a kick out of it too. Yeah, it's great. Now, uh, the last thing I'll ask you about, and this is, uh, you're doing the raid? Well, I'm doing, no, I'm doing a version of, we did it, when I wrote it originally, it was one of those things like, listen, I'm going to write this in a modular, I'm going to write my version of it, and if there's any issues about the rights or what have you, I want to be able to pull these elements and just have the script, because we're doing it, we're writing it on our own, and we did, and we and they, there was some rights problems, so I just went, okay, I'm pulling this stuff out, and it's basically our film now, so there's a separate, however they want to make the raid, quote unquote, and then there's our movie, um, but they're not, they're not, they're very dissimilar in the, the approach mine's really about the brothers um and it's not a it's it's there's, there, listen it's same same basic premise but it's not a hugely kind of fight centric movie um because i thought to go down that that's like a, that's like a that's a fool's you know that's a folly i don't want to do that because you're invariably going to be uh compared to the original and and that that's its own classic and i don't want to i don't wanna mess with that you know well, yeah, that was one of the questions I kept seeing pop up. It's like, why make remake the raid when everybody can here in the states can watch the raid? Right, and it's not. It's a very different movie. It's a very different approach. It's a very different milieu. The whole thing is, it's not Jakarta. It's South America. It's a very different kind of way in. Uh, you so let me get this right. If I'm if you're explaining yeah. it, they did the raid, the movies, the original two. Yeah, you're doing a. a version of that that's separate from that but there's also going to be another raid remake that's you're not involved in i'm not involved in that one no um the raid remake straight raid remake and then there's the last i heard they were still kind of pursuing that and that which is more of a in line with what gareth and what those and the xyz guys wanted to do i just didn't want to make that movie because yeah it was it was too and also, listen, I did a movie six years before the raid about people assaulting a penthouse and trying to kill a bad guy at the top, you know, smoking aces was that was so I'm not this is not a this is not a type of film that I'm unfamiliar with. I just didn't want to be wed exclusively to what the raid was. 
man you brought that movie up have you ever seen i can't remember the movie this it's um the eviction maybe and it's like this this house and these people it's the exact same thing as a raid but it came out in like the late 70s or early 80s really the eviction and people go in and they're pushing the tenants further and further up the building it's no like, it's like a post-apocalyptic sort of looking movie oh wow i gotta look that up the eviction yeah i think it's called the eviction but i might have the title wrong it came on the plex my boss puts all these crazy things on the plex and it came way before the raid or the swing really? places. And I oh, was just wow. like, what am I watching? It's insane. There's like one part where I had to keep rewinding because there's a lady that comes out a window and she's hanging on to a bed sheet and she's trying to get back in the window. And it looked like they actually dropped this woman out the window, like just some what, random. What was this film made? Was it, was it, is it a, is it a foreign film? Mm, it could be because it looked like it was dubbed, but it was sold as like in this period, I think it's got to be the eighties because it was sold in the period of like those post-apocalyptic type movies, okay. you know, like uh class of 1984 kind of thing okay 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 i'm gonna find this film that that's crazy i didn't know that i say it's called the eviction but I, it's something like that like if you put up a, a rental building and people are but it blew my mind because yeah i was like oh they made this like before what's the other one judge dreads kind of like that judge Dredd, yeah judge dread is like kind of like that well yeah, the other yeah but but uh no i wasn't aware of the eviction i gotta check that out your smoking gotta... aces came first but yeah there was another way <laughs> right 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 exactly yeah you never know this war is stealing from somebody or 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 or, 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 or tipping our hat in homage let's use that oh, that's, that's a friendlier way of uh, of, of saying theft um here in uh, quarantine i've found so many weird movies i never knew existed i'm just like what am i watching i know that's that's a great thing about something like that but it's like you can you can you can access all these films that you know yeah. um that you normally wouldn't have the access to i think that's what's great about it you know it's like what a wonderful time to be a film fan you can get anything anywhere anytime you know uh it's it's, yeah, it's dynamite it's dynamite well, um, that wraps it up, man. I've got to tell you, I really enjoyed this movie watching it in the theatrical experience, but the second time watching it, I really felt like I got more out of it. And it That's was like, fun. usually I'm not doing that with movies too often now where I go back. Right. right. Well, listen, it's like, you know, hopefully Hulu will provide you the experience of jumping right back in and people can check it out a second time. But yeah, I'm, I, thank you for your time as well, man. It was, a, it was, it was great chatting and, uh, yeah, you know, March 5th, Hulu. Let's, uh, here we go. After what seems like 37 years of trying to get this movie made. <laughs> yeah, and when's Cop Shop coming? Uh, Cop Shop, I, Cop Shop could be later this year. It's crazy. I've never had a, a, the instance of having two films in one year, but it could, it could happen this year. It's weird. I'm looking forward to that because, yeah, it's, it's like. Really good, it's really, really good. It's really good. Yeah. Those Raid movies, or not the Raid, the, um, the, they just went out of my head, but Frank Grillo's, the, what is that called? The Purge. The Purge films. The Purge. The Purge. I those think they're movies sixth. with him? Oh, man, yeah. those are so good. I know. They're doing, I think they're doing a sixth one. They're talking about it. Doing a, I think, I think DeMonico's, DeMonico's going to direct that or no? No, dude, that's, dude, that's Jim DeMonico. That's his, so DeMonico's such a good, such an underrated, uh, uh, and a fantastic writer, but such an underrated, in my mind, filmmaker. I really enjoyed what he did with that, especially with that first one. I thought um, he passed, was starting to pass those off to different directors. Maybe I I think it, like again, you you need that you need the guy back that that, that gave yeah. you the you know, the gas in the tank to begin with, and I think it's a good thing to bring. If they can get Demonico back, they should get him back, and and he should charge a king's ransom to go, to go and and you know, <laughs> yeah. but, but those they've been very successful, and it's like it, it's a huge credit to him. It's a great concept that he made um work it's a tremendous concept you know it really is oh it is yeah it's great so anyways again sorry. i'm gonna shut this off don't look at me weird it takes a minute for it to shut off and i'm always sitting here and the other person's like are you gonna shut it off so all right brother thank you so much man i really appreciate thank you it. Okay, bye, bye. bye now.